I literally went all in on business and became financially independent and all that good stuff and helped a lot of people make good money, but I neglected my health. I gained 47 pounds <laughs> over seven years. I, you know, didn't take care of my health. I didn't nurture the, the first three and a half years while I was in production. I didn't really put a lot of attention to my family. I was so busy working on the hamster wheel. And uh, so I have a lot of regret not being present and being around and letting myself go. And so um, six months ago, well, I mean, a year and a half ago, I made a decision, or a year ago, I made a decision that, you know, fitness would be something that would become a standard in my life. But six months ago, I decided that like, I was going to be like an absolute warrior, you know, like physically, I would work on getting myself in the best shape possible that that would give me confidence in leading our businesses during recessions that are coming up and that we could capitalize on opportunities. We could be more creative, more innovative. But by me fixing my health, making my family a priority, it's improved my happiness. Believe it or not, you can make all the money in the world, but if you don't have health and you don't have great relationships, it's not worth it. It'll be the most empty thing on planet Earth. Like money isn't gonna, isn't gonna make you happier if you don't have yourself in balance and you don't have your relationships in balance. But if you have wealth, time freedom and you've got good health and great relationships with people around you that is premium living right there all right back in another episode is beyond the sale podcast today we have jason samard team leader of the sims real estate group in vancouver island canada also jason has started a few years ago i think four four or five years ago started started up Sims coaching systems as well. Um, me and Rachel and the Carol home team were a part of that. That's how we connected with Jason. Um, they're, I think they're probably the top team in Vancouver Island have a huge market share there. And, uh, we've just been learning from him year after year here. And so super excited to have you on the podcast, Jason. Um, nice so, happy, brother. yeah, thanks for joining us, Jason. Uh, the, one of the ways that I was connected to you was just through watching you from, you know, beyond the, I think it was real geeks and the videos that they were coming up with. That's how I got introduced to you. Uh, and really what took me was the idea of you, how fast you, you grew from the start, right. In your first years. And, um, so I was always like just watching your growth and that sort of thing, I guess. Can you take us back to like, how did you got into real estate? Did you have a sales background? I mean. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. Yeah. So I'll, I'll walk you through the journey to, to getting to real estate. Yeah, please. Thing. So, uh, when I was 18 years old, I discovered that, uh, I was pretty good at sales. I was a good communicator. I remember I worked a, at the time we were telemarketing cell phones, like cell phones were like a new thing that were coming out. And I remember doing my very first day, like I just literally got out of training in my first two and a half hours on the phone. I sold eight cell phones and two and a half hours on the phone was like the leader in this call center. And it's like my, literally my first day. And I felt like the most incredible high and rush. I was just like, wow, I felt like I literally had superpowers. And so I realized then that like, I had the gift of the gab communication was kind of my thing. And I knew that at an early age, I had a father that said no to everything. Literally my dad would say no to anything. So if I wanted something, I had to handle objections and I had to be very persistent. And I kind of thank him to, to this day because he taught me that no doesn't always mean no, right? No, it just means, okay, I need to use a different approach and help them see the value from a different standpoint. So I've been handling objections from an early age. Fast forward, I got into banking at the age of 19. So I got my first opportunity working in a bank, worked my way up to a branch manager position within three years. I had a lot of grind. I didn't go to university. I knew for me, that wasn't giving me my ticket. I knew that like my communication skills and just my, my aunt, on job performance would help me get ahead. So I worked as a bank manager for seven years. I was in the industry for um, just under 11 years total. And then um, I got to a point, I was going through a divorce. You know, I have two kids, my first wife went through a divorce. And then I, uh, I spent a couple of years working in the internet marketing world, consulting realtors on the right technologies to use like websites, marketing services. Um, and, I, and I got to meet some really strong agents in the industry and I got to kind of learn what they did and what, what worked and what did it work. And I started getting obsessed with like conversion because a lot of realtors would tell me, oh, well, you know, I get all these internet leads, but I'm not converting anything. And so I became obsessed with like, how do I get better and better? And I started researching it. And then I decided 
I need to go out on my own and build my own real estate company because I kept seeing these gaps everywhere. And I was like, you know what? If these guys can do it, I know I can do it. But I'd never done it. So it's like this was my opportunity to put my money where my mouth is. I unfortunately was at a rock bottom financially when I started real estate. You know, like I literally was minus eighty thousand dollars in the hole after going in. And that's the best place to be, right? Oh, like, like, honestly, like not I, the best place in general, but yet yeah, you have to make it work. Right? At the time, it was like the worst place to be. I was like, oh my god, like it was horrible. The anxiety, the stress, the pressure. Like I was the main breadwinner of my family. I had a third kid on the way with my my current wife, and all these things. And it was like it was a lot of pressure. I'm not going to lie to you, John. But what I, what I decided to do is I took 100% accountability for exactly where I was at. And I told myself, you know what? Screw it. We're going to go all in. I'm going to bet on myself. I have a ton of experience. I have lots of skills and knowledge. And I believe in myself. This is the opportunity now for me to just be all gas, no breaks. And I had one mindset. Come hell or high water, we're going to win. I'm going to build an incredible business or I will die trying. Like there was no plan B for me. It was all in. Basically launched Sims Real Estate Group seven years ago, November 2015. Had a very clear vision and plan. I, I created a one-page plan. Literally, it felt like off a napkin, but I had a very clear one-page plan of exactly what I wanted to build. I wanted to build a team right from day one that I could exit production from in five years so that I could build a coaching company, teach people to do exactly what we did, and then use that as a pension plan for our agents. Awesome. Fast forward, I was able to do that in three and a half years, exited production after three and a half years. So for the last three and a half years, just shy of four years, I've been building our coaching company and I've been coaching agents like yourself and people in our EXP network, people in our coaching company all over North America. And we've helped develop uh, over a dozen seven figure earners now and many, many like over 500 to 750K producers uh, in the time. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. Um, and I guess... It's funny, I had this question for you, and but it came up, so was, I'm thinking I want to ask it. So where did you come up with the idea of the pension plan? And and also sharing, you know, I've always was amazed, I think, on our coaching calls, too, with, like, I think the first book you introduced us to was um, The Go-Giver, right? Yep. And th that's something that, just to be honest, like, it just doesn't come natural for me. And I think for a lot of people, if we just want to, like, we make money, we're afraid to, like, share or we want to hoard it because we always have that you know fear of losing or fear of lack right so we just constantly constantly as entrepreneurs learning how to open our mind up think bigger but it seemed like from from the start you you had an idea of like hey look i kind of have to share i want to, i want to share i kind of i feel like i have to share i also want to you know have this pension plan what how did you come up with that idea so think of it this way john who do you think is going to be more successful in the wild a lone wolf or a wolf pack that works together. Yeah. Right? It's not even gonna be close. So for me, I was like, if I can make a dollar, I'm gonna help my friends in my wolf pack make a dollar, right? So now all of a sudden four people are making a dollar, five people. And I'm like, how do I continually figure out a system where we all make money together? And it just, for me, there was no other way, honestly. I, I can't even fathom building a business and not having it where we're all making money together. I. I couldn't sleep at night if the whole business was built around just me making money and everybody else is struggling to make ends meet. And it's funny because, um, you know, we, we were talking, we were talking about the Kanye West stuff just before this call. Right. And, you know, there's some controversy around that. I, I, I heard a video the other day and, uh, it was a Jewish guy talking about why Jewish people tend to be quite successful. And he said, for every dollar that a Jewish person makes, he helps a friend make it, he helps four friends make a dollar in the process. And they like, they support each other and they work together. And that, that clicked for me, that made a ton of sense. I was like, you know what? That's kind of my philosophy in business has always been, let's make money together. Every company that we've built, everything that we're building, everyone that is in our company has been thought of and they're part of that. And we're building wealth together. And so it just, I just, honestly, I couldn't think of any other way to do it. I'm like, to me, this just makes complete logical sense. So my, my initial why when I started was I needed to secure my family financially. I wanted to make sure that my family was protected, but I knew that I, in the process of doing this, that I would help open doors and create opportunity for my, what I call my business partners, the people that have helped me build our companies. Nobody's an employee, by the way, I, I'd never use the word employee. So you know, there's like cultural components to our business. Like the idea of like, oh, you work for me is not something you'll ever hear from. 
I would introduce every single person or organization, it doesn't matter what role they play, as my business partner. And they are my business partner and they're treated that way. The way they're compensated, every one of our um, administrative staff, for example, have three different income lines that they earn money from, from our different businesses. So the more successful our businesses are, the more successful they are financially. And it's to create that innovative culture of like all of us being partners. Because what I know from working in the bank, John, is employees at best, at best will give you a very, very mediocre and average at best. But when you have entrepreneurs who are partnered in something and like really like this is something that they own a piece of and they're excited and they take a lot of pride, they that's how you get excellence. That's how you drive results and you drive innovation and moving things forward. So that always made logical sense to me. Perfect. So but take us back. Like so so we started, got into real estate was your first year. Um, I think for me, what really was intriguing to me was like, hey, this guy did over a hundred deals his first year, right? Starting. That I think that's what what it was. I think and hundred and three five. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so from from the get go, that was like that's pretty incredible. And a lot of those I believe were buyer sides, right? So you like which makes it even crazier because you were like probably running around and like a, like a madman trying to trying to service all these buyers, so can you take us back to like what what do you think made you successful? Obviously, I know it sounds like your grid and your determination of where you were in your life. Sure. Um, also, like on the conversion side of it too, you mentioned that too. But what why why you decide to work with buyers and orient yourself that way from the start? And what do you think made you so successful in the first year? Yeah, so so to, to give you context, it was 75% buyers in year one, 25% sellers. Okay. So there's still a decent amount of sellers because we didn't want volume. But uh, for me, buyers made sense. I knew with internet leads, Google AdWords, Bing AdWords, I could drive a tremendous amount of opportunities. Uh, I knew that the area that I lived in was very desirable for, for people all over the country, that, that they would want to live there. So that was huge. So I started targeting that, thinking about that. Um, and, and honestly, because I knew how, where to spend my money and I knew how to best leverage my time, which was massive action. Like I was proactively having a minimum of 20 real estate conversations a day, working my database. So my Google AdWords leads that I was driving, right? I also had my sphere of influence that I was working and building out my referral networks. I was consistently doing a video every two weeks, helpful video, putting that out there putting it all over social media. Anytime I get a listing, I made a big deal of that listing. I brought luxury standards and I just stayed very consistent with activity and I leveraged out very quickly. So I hired an assistant three weeks into the business. Uh, one of my partners today, Caitlin, uh, she had a seven, she had seven years experience in the industry. And so that was super valuable to me as a brand new agent because I wasn't joining a team. I was trying to build a team and I'd never done real estate. I'd worked closely with real estate in the banking world but her having that seven years experience on the contract side was really valuable and helpful. I knew that she could be the glue that holds the administrative side of the business together and could help me scale systems where I could focus 100% of my time on driving sales, right? Doing income producing activities, right? Prospecting, working my pipeline, being out there with buyers, doing listing appointments. And then what I quickly did is I knew that our biggest asset was going to be our people. I wanted to build that wolf pack, right? Like get everybody working together. So I brought on my very first agent, um, Jackie, who's our business partner today. He's been with me since month number four. And I call these guys, him and Caitlin, for example, and Jamie, our, our OGs, right? Our original gangsters that started this with me. <laughs> and he started off and I basically taught him the prospecting methods that I was doing to generate opportunities. And while he was doing his real estate license, he was an inside sales agent for us. And his job was to tee up opportunities for me. And he was able to make some, some decent money while he was learning. And then once he got his license, he then went out in production and I brought in the next guy, which was Jamie. And then it was basically, I just kept bringing in competent people, people that I knew that had the people skills and had the drive. They were main breadwinners in their families. And they kind of like had maybe it had some rock bottoms themselves. So they had a bit of a chip on their shoulder. But I, I basically did a very good job of articulating a very clear vision of where we were going. The track record that I'd already laid by that time when I brought in the first agent, I already had 27 sales in my first 90 days that I'd set up through my massive levels of action. And so when I showed them the lead generation systems and where we were going and the vision, I didn't know exactly how it would all work out, but I had a pretty clear plan. 
And I was able to bring a lot of confidence to my partners and they were looking for opportunities for themselves, right? They realized that they were in positions where they were making okay money, but like it wasn't really fulfilling them and it wasn't giving them the life that they could, could have. And so by, by me just finding good people and leveraging, here we are today, 21, we have 21 agents um, and staff members at our two companies between Sims Coaching Systems and our real estate group. It, you know, um, obviously you're in sales. You, you identify that you, you like sales. That was what you were oriented to. How did you convince these people? Like you're just starting, you're three months in, right? Like, hey, hey, Jamie, like come work for me. I, I can help you make six figures or whatever it is, right? So obviously, key word there. Um, they probably saw what you're doing. They, they saw everything and then you just sold them, right? You said, hey, Jamie, come work for me. My word, hey, Jamie, come work with me. Got it. Now, maybe subtle to some people, but there's a big difference there. Hey, come work with me. We are going to build. Here's what we're building. Here's where we're going. Here's the plan. Here's what's going to be built in the future. Here's the opportunity, right? I think I've always been really good at uh, creating excitement and being able to paint a vision. I'm a very much a visionary, right? Like I can see 10 steps ahead of my business partners. Then I always have to slow down and get them to kind of see the steps of where we're going. But I always have a very clear five-year roadmap. I, I basically work in five-year roadmaps. There was my first five-year roadmap. Now I'm working on my second five-year roadmap of where we're going. And it always is we. It's never me. It's here's where we are going. Here's what we are building. That's awesome. And the, and the biggest thing is is seeing people's genius. Like what is their superpower and building building positions around their superpowers. Not having jack-of-all-trades, masters of none, but specialists in different facets of the business recognizing that and getting everybody on the same common vision. If you can get everybody pulling in the same direction with the same common belief, right? Who have each other's back, who take a bullet for each other and support each other. It's pretty amazing what you can do, John. It's like literally transformed my whole life. And I'm just, I'm the type of person that like, I know that I work better in a wolf pack, creating a wolf pack around me than I would individually on my own. I know that I'm way more powerful having a network around me than I am on my own. Right. And it's like, why did you, why did you decide to work with us? Why did you decide to partner with us in our EXP movement and like build businesses together? Right. Hopefully, cause you saw what was possible too. And you saw like, Hey, when you put yourself around other people that think differently, think bigger, that's going to rub off on you. Right. Totally. It was a collaboration, right? Exactly. Like it was, it was a collaboration. It's named correctly. It was, you know, how you're collaborating with everybody else, how, you know, and that's, that's, that's a little, a learned trait for some people as well. Like how, how do we get more collaborative? Right. And which is, which is something that I've definitely taken from you. Um, and I'm, you know, always learning I mean, right now, learning, learning, always, uh, learning through every, every conversation that we had, um, looking back though, I mean, you did a, obviously we did a lot of things, right. We have, we have great results, all that stuff. Looking back, what, what have you done differently? If anything, looking back, knowing where you are now, when, when starting, what would, what would have you done differently or maybe sooner? Yeah, good question. I love that question, actually. And, and to be honest with you, I would have focused on my health. I literally went all in on business and became financially independent and all that good stuff and helped a lot of people make good money, but I neglected my health. I gained 47 pounds over seven years. I you know didn't take care of my health. I didn't nurture the, the first three and a half years while I was in production. I didn't really put a lot of attention to my family. I was so busy working on the hamster wheel. And uh, so I have a lot of regret not being present and being around and letting myself go. And so um, six months ago, well, I mean, a year and a half ago, I made a decision, or a year ago, I made a decision that, you know, fitness would be something that would become the standard in my life. But six months ago, I decided that like, I was going to be like an absolute warrior, you know, like physically, I would work on getting myself in the best shape possible that that would give me confidence in leading our businesses during recessions that are coming up and that we could capitalize on opportunities. We could be more creative, more innovative, but by me fixing my health, making my family a priority, it's improved my happiness. Believe it or not, you can make all the money in the world, but if you don't have health and you don't have great relationships, it's not worth it. It'll be the most empty thing on planet earth. Like money isn't going to, isn't going to make you happier if you don't have yourself in balance and you don't have your relationships in balance. But if you have wealth, time freedom and you've got good health and great relationships with people around you that 
is premium living right there. Totally. And that's honestly like a place that I've really uh, worked hard to be in. So my health would have been a big thing and really focusing on relationship for sure. Yeah, it's a great, great answer because I, I mean, I remember from us even started me and Rachel were on calls with you and Joe. Um, it's what, you know, and we talked to Joe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, he was on our, our podcast and uh, it was a great podcast. It was great to have him on there um, and learn from his perspective of, of the team and the coaching systems. But um, I remember us having the conversations and the conversations were always starting off. Hey, John, are you and Rachel taking date nights? Are you and Rachel, are you scheduling time just for, for her? Like, is there time scheduled for her? Is there time? I think the big takeaway was for us was us first. Like, right. What, what is it that you guys teach? Like, Hey, you first take care of yourself. Then, then, then your, your spouse. Right. And then, and then the business, right. Yeah. In relationships and then the business. Personal fitness, right? Take care of yourself, eat right, sleep right, your hobbies, your op- like things that you enjoy doing. Like you do Ironmans and you train hard. You know, for me, I play dodgeball. I go to the gym and I've got like a really, com- again, I've created a wolf pack in the gym environment to help me create that same competitive environment to push myself and bring out the most. Then you, you focus on your relationships. Do you have date night with your wife every week? Are you dating your wife? Like that's so important, you know? Hey honey, like Wednesday, five o'clock, be ready, put that cute little dress that you have on that I love. Um, the kids are taken care of. I'm taking you out for dinner. Don't ask any questions. Just be ready for five o'clock, babe. We're going out. And just her knowing that that's planned and that you value her, that you turn your phone off during that time and you just commit that two hours to, to your spouse, just doing those little things will give you longevity, will give your spouse more understanding when you have to put in extra time because you're filling her bucket up, you know? And then your kids scheduling in time with your family right? Getting to a point where you're not working weekends. I mean, that's something that people could aspire to, or at least taking a Sunday off, right? Take the Saturday afternoon off. Once you become proactive, like what we've been able to build and you create leverage and systems in your life, you realize that like, it's not all about working 70, 80 hours a week. In fact, when people brag about working 70, 80 hours a week, I think, wow, you guys really aren't getting the whole point of life is not to, to, to do that, right? Like most successful people, they work 30, 35 hours a week. They never miss any of their kids' activities. They consistently go on vacations. They have great time with their, their spouses. They just happen to be very laser focused when they're working and they schedule everything. And if it's not scheduled, it never happened. I literally live by my calendar every day. Yeah. And and that's the whole point of building a team. Not the whole point, but it's part, the big part of the point of building a team, right? It's just so you can have more time to focus on the things that are more important in your life. Like, you don't, it doesn't have to sacrifice the money too. I mean, you can build it as big as you want it, as small as you want it. You have the proper systems and that you guys help us do, pro- proper systems and uh, procedures in place in order to, to accomplish what you, whatever your dreams are, whatever your goals are. So yeah, that's really, really helpful. Um, going back to um, one of the things that you guys were really big on um, helping us with was getting repeat business. I think you mentioned a little bit when we started and Sims coaching systems, like what are Sims coaching systems? What are the systems? But I think some of the systems and processes we put in place were just directly from your playbook and just implemented in ours. And your whole team's helped us do that. I mean, it's what's really cool about what you guys are doing too. It's not just necessarily you coaching me on how to be a better, which would, it is that too. But it's also like, hey, plug into plug your assistant into my assistant, plug yeah. your ISA into my ISA. And have and everybody's coaching, which is great with the pension. It's such a big concept or a big, really cool concept for me when I heard it. it was like, yeah, like everybody is a part of the coaching system. So you know, we're you just plug our ISA into your ISA, and they'll teach your ISA how to sell more property and how to convert more. So it was just awesome. But um, going back to to make a long story short, going back to your repeat business, um, how did you? Why, how did you how did you see it like that? I guess you were generating a lot of leads, but why was that such an important thing for you um, to have repeat business? And what are you doing to make sure that you, you have repeat business? Yeah, well, good, good question. I mean, number one, eighty seven percent of buyers, if you look at the NAR studies, plan to use the same realtor on the next transaction, but only seventeen percent actually do. That's a huge disconnect, and it's a staggering stat. So when I saw that before getting in the industry. I realized that agents did a terrible job after the sale and managing the relationship going forward. The word past client is not something that I use in my vocabulary. You're a client for life, right? It's the mindset that like, I'm going to build an invisible fence around you 
and nurture that relationship for life. I think that's really, really important. And in the first couple of years, Sean, I'll be honest, we were more, I was a lot more transactional than I wanted to be just because we we're doing such quick volume, like so fast. Like we were, uh, man, I was again, all gas, no brakes. But this is why I also made the investment on the administrative side, because I wanted to build that invisible fence. So, you know, some of the things that we've developed is like, you know, a, a VIP program for clients. We have, um, you know, four key um, touch points that we send out every year to our clients. One of them being birthdays, you know, with brownies and a personalized card and um, home anniversary cards, you know, making sure we're acknowledging that. Uh, we do a lot of social media giveaways and uh, touch points, checking in with our clients, right? We've created a, our own internal secret VIP page for past clients uh, where we we give giveaways every week and we're showcasing different businesses and basically creating like a concierge service. So there's a lot of like touch points that we've put in and built into our after sale process. Um, and, you know, for us, like our obsession is how do we become the most client centric real estate company on planet Earth, right? How do we make it so that our clients have an outstanding, amazing experience and um, where they feel compelled that they'd want to share that experience with other people, right? We have things like strategic gifting that we do. And I mean, there's there's a whole thing that like we we teach people how to do, but creating that invisible fence uh, is huge. Giving your people the skills on how to position referrals is also really, really important. And it's funny because like when, when I first met you, uh, you were like the Mike Ferry guy. Like you were like the poster child for Mike Ferry, right? Like you had the freaking headset on, Fizbo's expired circle prospecting. You were a ninja. You were like, I, I do 75, 80 listings a year, right? You're doing good business. You're making good money. However, you hadn't even like taken the time to like think about putting those systems in play. You're constantly looking for new kills. You were a hunter. And I started introducing the idea of, well, what if you started farming as well? Because then you have crops that will come back every single year and you don't have to constantly be out there because you know what it's like, right? There's days when you're hunting and you're not catching anything. Totally. Right? Yeah. And and look, you know, the, I think the, the the great thing about about that was I had an aha moment. I think it's similar to like with you, with your health, right? It was like, man, it's like, like, I think some people can go a long time and, and have that blind spot and never see it like their whole life. And We've all probably had blind spots in our, in our lives and our business. But, um, but yeah, I saw it. I saw like, Hey, like I'm working a lot. I had kids, like I started, started having kids. My wife started saying like, Hey, like this is going to be ridiculous. You're working too much. And then it was like, and then why, like sort of, then I also saw that I had a blind spot with my buyers and past clients and, and, and COI, right. Your centers of influence. And so I realized I needed to t like go out and find the next person. I found the person that helped me with, you know, be that killer. But I need to find this other blind spot of my business that I'm neglecting. And and really the way to do it is go out there, find somebody that's doing it, go and, you know, rip off and duplicate, right? So and and that was that was a, that was such a huge thing for me. And and I and that's why I found you. And then also ultimately there's so much more there after that. I mean, I found you for that reason, but then there's obviously we're talking about that now, but there was so much more there too. So yeah, I'm extremely um, extremely grateful to you on that. So the, the, the thing is that you, you're, you're the visionary. Um, you see five years ahead and I, I, I love the way you think. I love the way that you're, you know, off the pension plan, you know, getting everybody, everybody to buy in, uh, ultimately your, your heart, like you're doing it, not necessarily for like that. You're doing it because you actually really want to intrinsically see people, um, change their lives. So, which is, I thought was really, really cool. Um, and something that I, I feel too, that I really, really, really admire. Um, but what is the next vision? I mean, how do you see yourself as the head of Sims coaching? How do you see yourself the head of um, Sims real estate group? Like what's five years from now? I mean, I'm, I'm excited. Good question. Sorry. I, I realized it was dark in my office. So I'm just getting some light in here. All right. So, um, I have a, I have a date marked on my, on my calendar and it's a date that I think about almost daily, to be honest with you. And it's 2025. I've set a goal that we will have a global organization with over a thousand agents. We're currently sitting at like 420 right now, a thousand agents by 2025, which will create enough residual income that I will be able to have a pension plan for almost every single person that works in our companies where they can have some level of financial freedom. That's, that's like a big goal that I've been obsessed with, right? Like, and I set this, this goal like two years ago. 
And I've just been like working like a madman, like how do I help get to that point? How do I get to that point where I can create that financial independence for others? Because I've been able to create that for myself. And now I'm working on how do I help my partners who believed in me do that? They're making good money, but I want them to have their, their money become more passive than active. Right. And it's like, well, you and I talked about when you're in production, I was like, man, you're making amazing money. You're, you're successful. Like from all the metrics of real estate, you're successful. But I'm like, John, you're one life event away where that income would be gone, right? If something happened to you, the way you built your business initially, your family would have to kind of like, you know, live off, you know, your trust, your, your, your whatever else you've built outside of your business. But like your receivables would, would pretty much plummet. And I was like, let me show you how to make your income more passive from your business, where it's not you exchanging time for money. And this is stuff that I've learned by putting myself in rooms where I'm the dumbest guy and I'm just sitting there taking notes, learning and absorbing and doing all of that throughout my life. And so, yeah, 2025 is a big date for me. I want to make sure that by that point, I have enough residual passive income that I can change the lives of our people. Um, I'd love to get our Sims coaching organization to a $5 million company by that point as well. You know where we're doing over five million dollars in receivables because that will allow me because i've given shares to my partners as well in our coaching company so that will allow me to pay out dividends quarterly that really are life-changing for people um and ultimately get our our entire organizations you know to 25 million dollars um a year in total volumes sales like uh income wise uh, by that point too so it's a big goal we're not there yet. There's a long way to go, but I'm the kind of guy that like, I love setting a big goal. If it makes me nervous, it makes me more excited. If that makes sense, like the harder the goal, the more, I don't know, the more I just get excited about it. I don't get to deflate it. I'm like, how do we figure it out? There's gotta be a way there's people out there that are doing this stuff. So it's yeah. amazing. When you just allow your mind to think big and you understand that the whole value of collaboration. Like if I make a dollar, I help five other people make a dollar, 10 other people, 20. When you have that mindset, it's it's you get people on board with you, and it's pretty cool because the wolf pack, as it gets bigger, it's a pretty dominant force. That's awesome, you know. And I thought also it comes up for me is that you know getting around people in those rooms and getting around people who think differently than you and bigger also helps you know, helps in the whole process of of just seeing it, getting an organization like EXP where there's infinite possibilities or there's more revenue stream possibilities. More, more ways to grow rather than just underneath a mom and pop broker or underneath a broker that's, you know, there's only one way to make money, right? Or maybe two ways to make money, but here there's infinite ways, right? And in, in ex expanding that revenue stream, getting in other, other rooms like you're, like I just said. Um, yeah, man. Well, Jason, I mean, this is awesome. I mean, anytime you get to spend time with you, I know your time is very valuable and I appreciate you spending with us. I, I know you didn't have to do that. I appreciate it. Um, and just pouring into, um, our audience and, um, we, we really appreciate the journey that we've been on together with you and, um, but, you know, excited for the future. Really, it's really exciting. Yeah. Man, you know, I take a bullet for you, man. Like you need something on there, you know, you, you're like, Hey, Jason, I need, I need you. Don't ask questions. I just need you to help me something. I'll be there. You know that, like, that's the type of relationships that we've built and formed with people like yourself and, um, others in our, in our collaborative movement group and. Man, I just, I'm proud of you, man. And I've watched what you've built and like, you've got an amazing wife behind you who really brings a lot of value to the business and just watching you guys grow that and like, you know, double. And I, I believe you guys will quadruple what you're doing in the next couple of years. Pretty exciting, man. Really, um, again, it's my pleasure and honor to like literally collaborate with you. And there's things that we're learning and pulling from you as well that you bring to the table. And it's, uh, it's just really cool. And, and, the one thing I, I always got to remind you because like, you're like, you want to be the best at everything, just like me all the time. You're like, Fuck, I'm bailing because you're not like number one in every aspect. Just remember, you got to enjoy the journey. It's a journey. It's like, it's a marathon. It's not a race. It's a marathon. Like we're all, like we're all building wealth and becoming more successful together. Um, and it's human nature for us to compare, but like, don't man, like you are phenomenally successful people would be lucky to have somebody like you as a mentor who could show them the ropes and like what you've done so systematically and how disciplined you are in your life and the things that you do. That's super, super impressive, my friend. Like I, I got to give you massive props. Um, thank you for literally, thank you for being my friend. Thank you for being a part of what we're doing. And I just think we haven't even scraped the surface. That's the most exciting part. We're literally just getting going in this journey and, and I'm loving every minute of the process. 
all the gray hairs that come along with it, you know, there's a lot of stress. It's just part of it. It just makes it all worth it, right? It's like you train for your triathlons, right? Like there's days where I guarantee you, you don't want to get up and go and, and, and ride the bike or run and swim, but you just push yourself mentally. You just go there. And it's the same thing with me. There's days where I'm like, oh man, I don't have my A game for the gym, but I'm going in there with an A game mentality, no matter what I push myself. Same thing with business. So uh, pretty cool, man. Like, uh, thank you. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. I appreciate you and, and Joe and, and the whole team, uh, the whole Sims uh, group, you know, um, Caitlin, everybody, the ISAs, we really appreciate you and the, what you've done for us. And, um, yeah, again, same, same with here, looking forward to the future growing together. So thank you, brother. Okay. Cheers. Thanks guys. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us. Talk to you soon. Thank you everybody.